everyone welcome back to the channel today we are diving into one of the most important parts of any regression model its evaluation there are five key matrices we will focus on mean absolute error root mean squared error mean absolute percentage error r squared and adjusted r squared if you remember our earlier video we built a simple model to predict monthly expenses using averages but we soon realized monthly expenses often rise over time right hence we moved to a better approach using a regression line to capture that trend so here is a quick question why did we choose only one line what made that line the best fit let's dig into that we had actual monthly expenses plotted and a straight line representing our predictions the vertical gap between actual points and predicted points that's called the prediction error we need to add up the errors for all the data test and train separately but for simplicity i have taken only three points y1 y2 y3 are actual values and y1 cap y2 cap Y3 cap are predicted values. Now our goal is simple. We want these errors to be as small as possible. We need to look at the aggregation or average of these differences. That's why the best fit line is called that. Precisely because it minimizes the residuals. Now let's evaluate our best fit line. to check whether it really has the minimal aggregate error one easy and intuitive way just take the average of all these errors and that is called mean absolute error mae is easy to understand it's just the average of all errors regardless of whether they are positive or negative in our example we took the differences between actual and predicted values also called residuals and simply took the average remember we need to do this same exercise for all the data just notice the modulus here this metric is great when you are working with real world data that may include outliers like an unexpected big purchase one month but mae has a couple of drawbacks first it treats all errors equally A tiny mistake and a huge one both count the same. Just think about this: if your model makes one huge mistake and several small ones, MAE doesn't give extra punishment for the big one. Example: predicting 10 instead of 100. That's an error of 90. And yet, it's treated the same as nine errors of nine units each. Let's take one example. So we have errors: ninety, ten, 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 and so on. If we calculate MAE, it comes ninety plus nine into ten divided by ten, which comes around one eighty divided by ten. So you get eighty. Now you pause here and ask yourself: Is that fair? Most would say no. MA is also scale sensitive. So, the another issue is that MA is sensitive to the scale of your data. An MA of ten is no big deal when predicting the rent in dollars. So, say actual rent is three thousand dollar and predicted is three thousand ten dollars. But that same MA could be massive if you are forecasting temperatures. or heart rates so now what is the fix enter rmse root mean squared error this guy does punish large errors because it squares the differences before averaging so we have a total of 10 predictions errors 90 10 10 10 10 and so on now you square each error so 90 square comes 80 100 Ten square comes hundred, one hundred. 
now you need to repeat this 109 times so 8100 plus 9 multiplied by 100 so you get around 9000 now mean of squared errors would come 9000 divided by 10 which is 900 and then if you take a square root so you get rmse of 30 so that means a big mistake will have a much bigger impact for example rmse of 30 is bigger than me which was 80 but it is still suffers from scale sensitivity you still can't compare rmse across very different types of data moving on how about MAP? this one tells you how far off you were in terms of percent let's take our previous example so your actual data is 100 100 100 and so on you have errors 90 10 10 10 we get 18 percent so it's great when you want a scale independent error measure MAP C of 18 percent makes sense whether it is heart rate temperature or rent in dollars but there is a catch if your actual value is zero or very small MAP blows up which implies do not use MAP for these cases MAE, RMSE and MAP focus on how accurate the predictions are but those previous metrics do not clearly quantify how well the model explains the variability in the data that's where R squared comes in let me, let me give you the official definition first R squared measures the proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that is predictable from the independent variable but let's simplify it remember our initial dumb model it always predicted the average monthly expense no matter what the input was then we upgraded to a simple linear regression model using just the dining out feature and finally we made it even better by adding more features to improve prediction accuracy r squared tells you how much better the latest model is compared to just guessing the average so if you look at the formula r square is nothing but 1 minus your residual divided by total variability and your yi is actual values yi cap is predicted values y mean the mean of actual values so in this formula if your predictions are close to the mean in other words if y cap and the mean y are the same the second term in the formula becomes 1 and r squared becomes 0 the model hasn't learned anything therefore a simplified definition is how much better is your model at predicting the lar the target variable compared to simply guessing the mean of the data we can prove the other point from formula as well if mean y equals the predicted value r squared becomes zero in addition r squared will be one where 100% of the variability in Y is explained by the model, not just the mean. So visualize this. All points lie perfectly on the regression line. No scatter, no deviation. Now let's take an example. So now let's take an example to understand R squared. Let's say actual 357 predicted 2.8 5.2 6.5 mean of actual y you get 5 so you compute total variance which comes around 8 you compute residuals which comes 0.33 and when i compare or when i compute r squared r squared comes 1 minus 0.33 divided by 8 so the model explains 96% of the variance which is excellent but wait r squared has a problem it always goes up when you add more features even useless ones enter adjusted r squared it only increases if the new features actually add value 
otherwise it goes down punishing complexity so the formula for adjusted r squared is 1 minus 1 minus r squared multiply n minus 1 divided by n minus k minus 1 where r squared is nothing but regular r squared n number of data points observations k number of predictors features so let's see you have a model with r squared as 0.8 using two features you had a third feature but it barely improves prediction r square might go from 0.800 to 0.802 looks like a win but i just said r squared might drop from 0.796 to 0.793 indicating no real value added so how does it punish extra features look at the factor n minus 1 divided by n minus k minus 1 so as k which are your features increases this ratio gets larger which means the term 1 minus r squared multiply by n minus 1 divided by n minus k minus 1 grows and that pulls adjusted r squared down so more features heavier penalty unless they really improve the r squared let's recap so you metric ma is for general purpose with or without outliers rmse when large errors are critical clean data map when percentage error is needed and y is not equal to zero r squared to assess how well the model fits the data adjusted r squared to compare models with different features all right which metric do you prefer in your projects ma r mse r squared let me know in the comments and if you found this useful like and subscribe because we are just started with real world ms